Hello, my name is Alec Bruce, I'm with Toolstop and today we're going to give you an example of how something works. We're talking about a battery type drill today, uh, we'll show you what is made up internally in the drill and give you a brief introduction as to how the drill goes about doing its job. Power in a battery drill is uh, governed by the power produced by the battery. Once the battery is plugged into the unit, that creates a circuit which goes up through the gun, eventually into the mechanical portion of the gun. The motor here will then move as you press the switch to turn it on, and depending how you activate it in a forward or reverse direction using the button here, it will govern the direction of the flow of current in the motor. This will then make it turn to drive screws or holes into the wall or unscrew whichever way you're driving, forward or reverse. The power when it comes from the battery will get into the unit by virtue of these connections here. They make connection to the power within the battery, it then flows into the unit and as it moves up the unit will go towards the motor. In order to see what's in the unit we'll strip off the casing. The casing in most of this type of unit is referred to as a clamshell which means when you look you can hardly see the join uh, and that's in order to try and keep the dust out and water because of the environment in which you may be working and using the drill. The case itself will be held by a number of screws which you can see the screw holes here most of which I've already removed. The power to the unit once it's inserted will flow into a motor. The simplest thing that can go wrong with it is the brushes on the motor. There are carbon brushes. They start to grow smaller through use and they may well give a problem. And this type of drill is very easy to get into the brushes themselves. They're mounted with below this little lever here. When that pulls off I can see the end of the motor and having looked at the end of the motor I can now see exactly where the brush is. These brushes could be removed and replaced without stripping the unit down any further but we'll take the cover off so that we can see properly internally. If I now remove the upper portion of the casing, that allows us to see inside. And what you'll notice there, there are air holes and cooling holes within the unit, so there will always be a certain amount of ingress of dust, and that's the type of stuff that you see that's hanging about now. That allows us to look internally into the unit. Inside the unit we've got the battery portion which would be fitted to the unit, it receives its connections through this portion here. There's a little electronic control here that tries to keep the, con the current constant in the motor. Through the wires here, it is attached to the switch. And from these wires here, it will become attached to the motor. In this particular unit, it's a solid state motor. This is the motor portion here. Certain other units will have a two-stage motor made up of an armature and a commutator uh, and a coil which it will sit internally. But this is a solid state type motor. If it gives a problem then that has to be replaced as a complete unit. This portion of the unit when it receives current will drive the gearbox. The gearbox is this section here. It can work at various tolerances and torques and that's done by turning it round. Our motor here drives through to the end where we'd fit our drill bit. The drill bit would then be turned by the gearbox and the gearbox is engaged through the motor. On this particular unit we have a speed activator up at this end. The activator can give you one or two speeds. Generally speaking the lower speed is when you need high torque, for example when drilling into stone. When you wish a faster drill, drilling holes through softer wood etc, then you would switch it to its second speed. So you have a one, two speed action which basically just affects the gears within the gearbox. 
As uh, previously explained, the motor will turn in one direction or another. This will then control the direction of rotation of the bit inserted in the end. This is done through putting current through the switch. The switch then applies current on a positive to negative uh, ele electrical ratio. This will allow positive current to flow to one side of the motor and underneath where we have the opposite brush a negative. So plus the negative then makes it move in one direction. By altering this switch here, this changes the direction of the current in the switch. So instead of having positive coming to here, we can change that to negative and this has the effect of changing the rotation of the drill bit so that you're no longer drilling in but reversing out.